Hi, my name is Sandra, and today I'm sharing eight different activities you can use with ribbons and scarves in your music classroom today. Let's get started. I think it's super important to incorporate movement activities in your classroom because it not only increases learning, but it helps kids with social, emotional, and physical health. These are great reasons for you to include movement in your classes today. Movement with ribbon and scarves can help your students with gross motor movement, building those strong muscles, and help them keep their attention focused on something while their hands are busy. Another reason scarf and ribbon activities are important is because we can help students make movements across the midline. We're doing that because as I tell my students, we're making the brain connections and we are also helping the body and the mind work together. I'm also including switching hands from left to right. I do that because when we're learning to read, we're learning to read from left to right, and we're helping kids use their hands and develop fine motor skills. So when we do scarf activities or ribbon activities, we want to switch from left to right. Use both hands in our activities. In today's video, I'm going to be using movement props from Bear Paw Creek. I highly recommend their props. This is a scarf. They have a set of scarves in different colors, rainbow colors. This is a hoop ribbon streamer, which is great. I love this because the kids can hold on to it. And we're going to do an activity with that later in the video. And the scrunchie band, which is great for your littles because it can attach to their hands and ribbon streamers. And you can also do the streamer activity I've got to share with you today with these ribbon streamers. So we're going to have so much fun today with the Bear Paw Creek resources. Let's get going. It's a game, it's a learning tool, it's a brain break. Anything that you do with scarves is gonna help your students learn in many different ways. They're going to be able to make some brain and body connections when we do large and small movements, when we cross the midline, and when we're using our big muscles and our little muscles to hold our scarves and move with them. I have a fun game that you can play with your students and this is to teach them all those ways you want them to move. I notice I give them a scarf and all of a sudden they're just doing this with it. Well, that's, that's okay on a certain level, but we don't wanna take it up because we know that if we incorporate those special kind of moves that we're gonna really be helping our students. So that's why we do an activity to teach them how to use their scarf and we're gonna make it fun. It can be a transition activity. It can be something you just do even for 30 seconds. Just choose your moves and then you can even do this without mu music. So we're gonna to count to eight beats and we're gonna do each action for eight beats and you're just gonna say, just mirror me or copycat me. No talking during this activity. Let's grab our scarf like this. I want you to hold it tight. All right, nice. Now let's switch our hands. That's gonna even be hard for some students. And don't forget that if you're doing your right to left, it's backwards for them. So I actually do my activities backwards in the classroom. So I would be doing my left to right, so they're going right to left. And I would hold it in my left hand to do the activity. Most likely, most of the students are gonna be right-handed, so then they're literally going to be mirroring me as I do the activity. So that's something for you to think about. It might take a little practice for you to get used to using your left hand. It's a little harder to do swirls with the left hand than it is with your right hand. So those are things to think about. So we're going to go through and we're just going to go count to eight for each move. And we're going to think about large, small, cross body, high and low, and just focus on those things for a minute. So we're going to do large movements, which can be a big wave. Then we switch our hands and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, switch hands, and we repeat that. You can repeat it as often as you need to. 
then we're going to do the next activity and try and do four beats in between. And if you don't want to count out loud, that's fine. You can just go, okay, ready? Now we're going to cross the midline. We're going to make a big X. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch hands. Here we go. And you can see how you could take your time with this. I always put on fun music because I just ran things from my computer and I had it on a screen. And then I press that and I know that for the crisscross, I have um, turn the beat around. Da, 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 da. I would have a certain song for each move. And then we're going to practice. See, we did big, we did cross body. Now we're going to practice high and low up down like this. You might have some songs like from Carnival of the Animals is perfect to use for this activity. And then we are going to use high, low, big muscle movements. And then you can uh, add in some footwork if you want to. So if they're moving big, we're gonna sway back and forth. Then we can get all the leg muscles moving too. And when they cross the, the midline, you could have a march. So now we're doing two things at once, which I would say for a secondary activity, I wouldn't do that first, but hopefully that gives you some ideas on how to teach your students about how to use the ribbons and scarves before you dive into doing activities with them. Then you'll all be together and they'll know what you mean by, okay, make it high and low, make it big, cross your body. They'll know what those terms mean as you do your activities. We're going to use a scarf for this next activity. I wrote a short and simple little song. It's called The Scarf Song that you can use in your classroom with your younger students, especially if it's their first time using scarves or you just want something short because you have other things you need to get to in the music classroom. And uh, this song is going to help them with the big gross motor muscle movement, fine motor muscle, crossing the midline, and also listening because in the song there are action words and we're going to talk about the action words and we're going to listen to the words before we move our scarves. And then after we listen to the song, we're going to talk about how we want to move our scarves for each move. Now, I'm not saying that I'm telling them exactly which way they have to wiggle, but when I say the word wiggle, let's make sure everybody knows what does wiggle mean. Because if you're working with like maybe even four, four year olds, I was going to say fourth graders, but it's if you're working with four year olds, then they may not know what wiggle means. So it's just waving back and forth, making the scarf wiggle. It's like the scarf is giggling. And so we just want to go through and make sure that they understand the vocabulary and so they're not confused and that will help them understand how the song goes. There's a video I made for it, so let's listen and watch that now. Do these actions. Twirl four times. Cross over four times. Wiggle four times. High and low two times. Go around in a circle six times. Go around faster four times. And around slower two times. Then at the end of the song, drop your scarf. Look at my scarf twirling. See all the colors swirling. Wiggle, 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 whirling. Look at my scarf twirling. All the colors swirling. Wiggle, 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 whirling. Round and round it goes. Faster, faster, slower. And drops. When I use a 
scarf activity, I really do like to go through and explain what we're doing. I like to go through the steps, but many times I will we'll put something on and just let the students experiment. Both ways is okay, it just depends on what the end goal is. So when I use the scarf song, I am going to take some time going through the words. I'm gonna talk about what does it mean to wiggle, what does it mean to bounce, so that they know and twirl and whirl, what all of those words mean. And then they can show me while we're doing it. It can be very actively engaged teaching, learning type activity where they're mirroring me. And then we'll go through the song and I might use a video to teach it. And then I'll have them do it with me. And then I'll step away and have them do it without me. Then I can bring this song back throughout the entire school year and use it either as a transition activity, um, a movement activity that we might need, like let's say we're having to stand and work on program songs, so we need a scarf song at the end of class. This could be my standard little scarf song. And it could even be in a cute little preschool or kindergarten music program. So I hope you enjoyed and we'll use the scarf song. high and low and we're going to be reaching high and low and get our arms way up there and we're going to get our arms way down low so that we're using those gross motor muscles we can even use our bodies we can jump up high and crouch down low to make the movements even bigger. That's gonna burn more energy. It's gonna give everyone a little stress relief. And then after we do the activity, we're gonna get a little more focus from everyone. So I love to incorporate movement, scarf, and ribbon activities into the music classroom for all these good reasons. They're so important for our children today. In the Sing, Play, Create free resource library, I have a fun freebie of high-low activities. It has a presentation with some animal sounds, some games and activities where you play the sound and the students can show you high or low. I highly recommend going and getting that freebie. You can get it at singplaycreate.com by subscribing to our newsletter and go in there. There's over 75 free resources for you to use to teach music concepts. And if you incorporate this activity and use a scarf or ribbon streamer with it, I feel like it's even gonna be more effective than just having them jump. What I love about movement props, and this is from Bear Paw Creek, it's a ribbon uh, streamer with the hoop, is that they give my hand something to hold on to. And these are cool because you can sanitize the, the hand uh, hoop very easily. And they just, you know, just wrap up. They store so quickly. Students can hand them out fast. They're pretty. They make really great rainbows. And they give my students something to hold on to. And it helps keep them in their space, which is also really important. So go get the resource in the Sing, Play, Create Free resource library. It has a fun animal song in it. Uh, birds tweet, hi! Cows moo low, and then you can have the students show the tweet, 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 and the moo, 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 and uh, you can do that with using the freebie. You can also use any song, like Old MacDonald is really good to use this with too. You can sing, uh, you can have the student show you when the animal makes a sound, if it's high or low, and really have fun uh, with their voices with the nay, nay, here. And, uh, and you can change your voice in the middle of the song, nay, nay, here, and see if they can keep up with you. Here and nay, there and nay, everywhere, nay, nay. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. On that farm he had a chicken. Cluck, cluck here. Cluck, cluck there. Here a cluck. There a cluck. Everywhere a cluck, cluck. So as you can see, I love to do these kind of things, and I know your students will too. So find a song, find an activity, get some ribbon streamers, and have fun teaching your students high and low in music classroom. I'm talking about scarf activities that teach music concepts, and one that is really fun is the Boom Chicka Boom song. Everybody knows it, everybody can do it, it's all over YouTube, you can find it, and it's a call and response which makes it perfect for our elementary music classroom. We can do it with scarves. So we're going to teach the students they're only going to wave their scarf when it's their turn. This is going to help them make a mind and body connection. And for 
for your kinesthetic learners and some of your other learners who might not get it with you just telling them, they're going to be able to see and feel and do the echo part and this is going to really help them. So I recommend that you give this a try. If you haven't taught SCARS before, and this is the first time and you're trying to do this with Boom Chicka Boom, it might be a little much for them to do the very first time. So I'd highly recommend you look at this video and take a look at my way to teach your students SCARS activity before doing this one. Then you could do this activity very easily with your second, third, and even fourth graders, I think would enjoy this activity, depending on your kids. So you're going to say, uh, we're going we're gonna to teach a whole bunch of different music things. We're going to teach loud and soft. And you're going to have the students echo you. And you're going to say, I'm going to say it first. And then I want you to echo me. And I want you to only play your scarf when it's your turn to talk. Okay? So you can sing it or say it. It doesn't matter. We're just going to practice the... Uh, changing the volume or the loud and soft. I said a boom, chicka boom. And then you're going to have the students. I said a boom, chicka boom. And you're going to go through it. And then you're going to do soft. I said a boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, chicka boom. You can also do high low. I said a boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, chicka boom. You're going to do low. I said a boom, chicka boom. And make, make sure the scarf goes low. I said a boom, chicka boom. The first time you do the activity, you might want to just focus on changing the words like the loud and soft, high and low, fast and slow. Next, you can incorporate some specific scarf moves that they need to copy. So maybe for high and low, you're going to do this, boom, chicka, boom, and low, boom, chicka, boom, bounce. But maybe when you do the loud and soft, you're going to do cross the body. Boom, chicka, boom. Boom, chicka, boom. Boom, chicka, rock, a chicka, rock, a chicka, boom. And now we're getting our whole body in. I can even move side to side and really get into it. I said a boom, chicka, rock, a chicka, rock, a chicka, boom. Have fun doing this with scarves. Boom, chicka, boom is a great song to use for this call and response song. There's also books you can buy and you could read the book. You could do the scarf movement. You, you just want to make sure that when you're choosing these actions, you're remembering to go big and small, cross the body and go high and low. Nice, wide, big movement. And don't forget to switch hands. So you'll want to make sure you're switching hands and giving them a chance to do both sides of the body. This will make this activity really worth it for your kiddos. Instead of just playing around with the scarf, this makes it much more meaningful. It has such a great purpose because you're helping them make the mind and the body connection. You could have so much fun teaching them music concepts using a scarf and the song Boom Chicka Boom. I've got a ribbon streamer with a hoop on it from Bear Paw Creek. And I'm going to share another little song that I wrote specifically for ribbon streamers. And if you don't have them, I just say you might want to look and see if you like these because the thing I do really like about having this one is that they're holding it. And I think this is really good for fine motor development where they have to hold something. And these are really popular with younger students. But I will tell you that I incorporated these into my fifth and even sixth graders use them in concerts depending on the music they were doing it with. So you might want to think about this. Think outside the box. Your kids just might really like these. So this is a little song that I wrote specifically for the Ribbon Streamers, and it's, of course, a rainbow song. I'm going to share that video with you now. Do these actions. Rainbow wave from low to high four times. Wave side to side four times. Zigzag across your body up and down four times. Crossover move, figure eight, four times. Swirl low to high four times. Rainbows 
clouds in the sky Waving up so high Sparkling in the sunshine Colors floating by Rainbows in the sky Waving up so high Sparkling in the sunshine Colors floating by the sky waving up so high sparkling in the sunshine colors floating by rainbows in the sky rainbows in the sky teaching this song or a song that has movement with it, I always like to have the students move freely to the song first. Then I just play it and I have them move. That's in their personal spaces and with those kind of directions. I let them feel the music and express themselves. I think it's important for them to not talk during this activity. I know that's very difficult, but we're going to talk on this part and this part we're not talking. So the talking part of the activity is going to be after they've done the song, I've taught them the lyrics. This song in particular might have sp some specific movement that I want them to do. So then I'll teach them that. Then I'm going to give them a chance to talky talk. I'm going to have them be in small groups. Now this would be for third grade and up, maybe second grade depending on your students and your classes and your sizes and all those fun things. So you can look at that and see which of your classes would work and you put them in groups and you take the song and you say, I want you to create a little story that goes with the song. And you can do lots of levels with this. You can give them paper, have them draw pictures. But if you just want them to do it quick in one class, you can just say, you know, we just want a little story that has maybe five sentences. So maybe you have five kids in a group. Each one are going to tell something and show something with the song. And then at the end of class, everybody's going to do the song together. Or if you want to take more time, you could have each group perform their movement for the song. And you could have them share their story. You could really make this a bigger group activity or smaller group activity. It's also a fun way to incorporate movement into a station activity. So you print the lyrics. You might need to type up a piece of paper that says, create a story or your specific directions. Make sure you keep it simple and your station, if it's only five minutes long, then maybe you'll say, come up with one to three sentences that they can write down in that group and they're gonna do that in the station and they might just leave that there for you to see later. Or you can have them just make it up and do it in the station as an activity. They don't necessarily have to write anything down, but you'll say, here's the song, here's the lyrics, here is the video. Of course, you have a little computer or tablet there for the station. Now create your own actions to the music and they could play the music and do their own actions for you at a station very easily. With all of these other activities, remember to incorporate big moves across the body, small moves, even full body movement, like a big rainbow moving, and that's going to help them make the brain connections and make the music to body brain connections even stronger. This is why we're incorporating movement props in our classroom. And it's fun. Who doesn't want to do this all day? So fun.
So we have our scarf and in this activity we're going to talk about fast and slow. So I might use music, I might play the piano, I might even just use a drum or I might be sitting with the xylophone off to the side and playing something on the xylophone. That part doesn't really matter. It's just what is your what are your students used to listening to and what will make it easy for you to play the game. We're going to use the music to help the students know whether they're supposed to bounce fast or bounce slow. When I play this game, I do like to use a little drum or a little tambourine because I wanna be walking around and making sure I don't have someone just doing this all the time. I want to make sure that we are like following the directions and getting the feel of fast and slow. And I try not to talk, so I might just, you know, if I'm playing the drum, I might just look at them and I'm playing the drum and help them play a little slower. So it's a good way to start and stop the game. Here's my scarf and today we're going to make a puppet out of it. And we're going to use our fingers, our fine motor muscles. We're going to work them out. And so what we're going to do is I would show you I'm not on the floor so you're gonna have them place it on the floor so I'll just be the floor like this and then they're gonna take the center of it and pull it up like this and then we're just gonna go like this and make a little head and then you can play with it they can make a really big head or they can keep it really tiny and have a lot of fluff at the bottom Everyone's going to choose a different way to make their puppet today. But these puppets, they're not really puppets. They're bunnies. And bunnies like to hop. And today the bunnies have a special game they're going to play in the garden. And did you know that the middle of our circle is a beautiful green garden with lettuce and tomatoes and cucumbers and all kinds of yummy vegetables. Oh, there's even carrots in our garden. And Bunny wants to go hop in the garden. Can everybody show me how Bunny can hop in the garden? And here's where I would make sure I'm doing across my body and maybe if it's a little bit older, like if you do this with second grade, you could say, okay, and you've practiced. I talked about the other, there's practice video. You practice like switching hands would be really good to do. Little Bunny's going to hop in the garden. Hop, hop, hop. But this is going to make Little Bunny get really tired. And he's going to need to take a little nap. So when the music stops, Bunny's going to have to hurry back to his burrow and take a little nap. This will be the resting time. So when the music starts, Bunny gets to hop in the garden. And when the music stops, Bunny's at rest. The first time I play the game, I don't have them get up from their seats. Everybody's sitting and I'm walking around and making sure everything's okay and everyone's doing it and everyone's fine. And then when they stop, I say, oh, look. It's time to nibble on some carrots and I'll pass out some pretend carrots and their little bunny can nibble, nibble, nibble on the carrots so they get more energy to play the game again. Now the next part can get a little crazy so it depends how many students or children you're working with but you want to give them a chance to go in the middle of the circle and hop with their bunny. And I don't worry about if it's on the beat, we're just hopping and we're moving. And don't forget to have them switch hands if you can. Carnival of the Animals music um, is perfect for this because there's lots of different tempos. You can be at the piano and play if your students know how to play the game. And you can change the music while they're hopping around in the garden. And that would work too. One thing I've done is I'll split the circle in half. So half the circle goes into the garden while the other half is just bouncing their bunny in the burrow because they hear the music and 
they have their carrots and they want to help and play and bounce, but they can't go out into the garden because it's not their turn. And then we'll switch. So I might just play some simple boom, 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 boom. Very simple piano music that I don't have to read. I'm just playing it. And then we can do the bunny activity. Don't forget to go high and low, bounce side to side, get that cross body moving, and also switch hands. These are all really important things to do when you're using scarf activities. Have fun with this bunny activity. So it's really important to help the students have the experience of fast and slow through the movement using the little bunny puppet and they also get to do the creative pretend play, which helps their imagination, helps them make brain connections, helps the brain and body connection get stronger, which is what we're trying to do with our movement props. I have my scarf and I'm ready to do vocal explorations. You're thinking, why do I want to use this scarf? Well, we're trying to make mind and body connections. We're trying to get students to make movements across the body. We're trying to get students to make big movements and little movements, high and low movements. And those movements are going to connect with our voices. And it may feel strange at first to do this, but I promise you that it will work, especially if you do what? You repeat this activity more than one time. So I did it with my students because they love to use scarves and they knew how to use the scarves. If you want to know how to introduce the scarves to your class, I did a tutorial at the beginning of the video on how to teach them to follow you and how to make the movements. I would do some of those activities first before I started doing it with vocal explorations. When I did vocal explorations, I always had my students use their hands because I'm a big believer in the mind and body connection. So adding a scarf into that wasn't a big step. So if you haven't done first this, you may consider that as part of your steps to moving more movement props into your activities. But this is a fun way for you to do this in the classroom. What I really like about it is that the students are very engaged when they're doing this and it gives me a really good opportunity to keep walking around the room as sometimes there's just other things you have to do. And so the students are following the animated PowerPoint or video on the uh, on the screen and you can be either helping them or like I said taking role doing some of those things you might need to do and there's usually one or two students maybe more that know what you're doing if you've modeled it and taught it before and they can be the leaders you can put them up front and have them be the teacher all right so those are a couple tips on how to do vocal expirations it's really important to help your students with audiation and it helps them practice singing, which they may not do every day. And so it's really good with kindergarten in particular. I like to do this activity almost every time they come, either with the fingers or using a movement prop. This scarf activity is a little bit complicated, but in my mind, it incorporates all of the things I've talked about in this long video and all the different activities. It's got movement. It's got listening. It's got creating. It's got everything. It's got social skills in it. Everything that we need to work on for our scarves is in this activity. I didn't make this up. It's pretty a uh, well-known activity, but it is using Vivaldi's Spring Concerto, and it is teaching form, and we're going to use scarves to teach form. If you haven't done scarves before, then you want to do a mini lesson on that before you attempt this kind of activity to make sure your students know that they're supposed to make big moves, small moves across the body or words that you want them to learn. Cross your body, high, low, side to side, zigzag. And you want to go through some of that with them before you begin this activity. Now, our famous composer, Antonio Vivaldi, put the four seasons together and spring is a great one to teach form. I'm going to show a picture of the form and I'm going to talk about it using some pictures and how you can incorporate this into your classroom because we're going to have trees and we're going to have a river, we're going to have a sun, and each of those things are going to re represent a different section of the song. And you'll want to work on creating some kind of movement that goes with each of those 
tools. Now, there's lots of ways to do this. These are just my ideas. I hope they're useful for you. Let's get going on that. Here it is. Antonio Vivaldi, Spring. Form is A B A C A D A E A B A. Here are some ideas on colors and movement for each section. You can have A, the trees with brown and green scarves and move high and low. In the B section, you can have the birds use pink and purple scarves and flutter. And that might mean holding the scarf in the middle and then waving it up and down so it looks like a little bird. C is the river and using blue scarves and we're going to do a crisscross, a figure eight in front of the body. D is thunder and lightning with white and yellow scarves and we're going to make zigzag across the body. That's high and low zigzag movements from one side to the other. Don't forget to switch hands on these activities. And finally section E is the rising sun with red and orange scarves and, and here we can make big swirls. Students can switch hands after they get to know each movement. You can find free scarf movement cards in the Sing, Play, Create free resource library. They'll work perfectly with this Antonio Vivaldi spring form activity. In this video, we've been swooshing and waving and tossing and moving and making big movements and small movements and using our gross motor muscles and our fine motor muscles. Using ribbons and streamers and scarves. These are from Bear Paw Creek and I appreciate working with them. They are a really great place to go to for your movement props. I appreciate you watching this video. Thank you so much. I hope you will subscribe and let's keep kids moving and learning with music. <laughs> See